going on today? So what we're going to do is I'm going to give a couple of announcements. Nathan's going to say some things, and then each of the uh, team leads are going to come up and say what's been going on the last week, uh, and then we're going to break into groups and do some scrum, which Nathan will talk about in a bit. So um, from everything I've seen so far, things seem to be going pretty smoothly, which I like. Um, there's a lot of communication between departments, which I like. Um, this is uh, first reminder, just right now, make sure you are signed up for Trello like by today. Because if you're not on Trello, you're not technically part of the, uh, the development team. So make sure you're on Trello, because that's how your team leads are going to be communicating to you. Like, I, I can't stress enough, make sure you're on Trello. Make sure you're on, if you need to be on GitHub, get on GitHub. Whatever you need to do, have all the resources for you so that you can do your work and so we can all work together and make this work out. Um, second announcement. Um, I know work's been going smoothly. That's awesome. Let's, and I know this is like midterm time. Let's all remember as we're going forward, um, consistent work is what's going to get this done. If we're, if we're, it's very easy to come and say, okay, I've got this and this and this. Let me just put this off and put it off and put it off. Next thing we know, it's April and we're not done yet. So, um, what I what I would recommend to you is every day. 20 minutes, even while you're eating, look over your stuff that you're supposed to be working on, just to keep it fresh in your head, so that way when you jump into it, let's say you have to wait three days before you can actually spend some time and look on it. If you've been looking at that for 20 minutes a day already, you're eating, doing whatever homework, or doing what you gotta do, it's gonna be fresh. You're not gonna have to go, oh wait, what am I doing again? Right, okay, this is what I was doing, and you don't have to spend that time remembering. So while we're going forward, just for our professional purposes, Let's try and keep just a little bit of work every day so that way we can remember it all. Um, and with that, Nathan, chat. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, what we're going to be going over is I'm going to be going over um, Agile and Scrum. And those are the methods by which we're going to make sure that we're all uh, staying on the same page and that we're doing the right thing. Um, we're always going to be going back to what we've uh, learned so going back to last semester we had problems where um, people weren't necessarily working on the right thing and uh, scrum was a really good way in which we um, fixed that and um, so agile is a uh, production methodology and this is in contrast to um, uh, the original way that uh, people developed software, and which was called waterfall. And waterfall originally uh, came from you know architecture, uh, like building, uh, like constructing, like planning the construction of buildings. And so the idea was, hey, we have this problem. We're going to figure out how we're going to solve it ahead of time, and then we're going to assign all of the individual parts of the solution to various people, which sounds totally fine. Um, the only problem is that when you're, once you're doing software development, which uh, games are, um, you run into this problem where you are creating a universe uh, from scratch in a lot of uh, scenarios in the sense that um, a computer doesn't know what gravity is. You have to tell it what gravity You have to define gravity. You have to uh, define how fast someone can run. You have to define the strength of materials and things like that. And so that creates a lot of problems that you just really can't plan for. And so Agile is a uh, way of uh, not having to be so uh, rigid in your planning style. Uh, and it's a way that uh, allows you to react quickly to things. And so the first thing, which is different in a way, uh, the first thing that you do is uh, instead of creating a list of requirements um, and figuring out how long you're going to take, you figure out how long you have and then you kind of uh, figure out what is going to fit in that time frame. And those are called, oh, we'll get, that, get to that in a sec. Um, meetings are cut down into really clear um, kind of uh, forms of communication. You just state your goal, whether or not you achieve your goal, how you can achieve your goal in the future. Um, and because everyone stays in contact, you can really quickly identify what's working and what's not and fix that. Um, in order to make this work, we use a thing called sprints, and sprints are like tiny development cycles um, where for one week people just work, and then at the end of that week 
you have all of these little tiny products that are finished. So it's like a character concept that is finished, a character controller that is finished. Not like an entire um, amalgamation of things that have, like you don't make a game in a week, but you make finished parts of the game that you don't have to go back and revisit, ideally. Um, and so incidentally, um, our sprint cycles are going to be one week. And so it's our first sprint is going to, well our first sprint was like sort of last week, but that was like more like a job. Um, and so this is gonna, our first sprint is gonna be this week and we're gonna have really clear goals and we're going to be using uh, Scrum, which I'll go over in a sec. Um, and we'll be going over what it is you need to do and you'll be helping helping us understand what you need to achieve that. <laughs> go, go, go. All right. Um, so the way that we do this is with these short meetings called scrums. And uh, scrums are uh, meetings in which you, each per everyone stands in a circle. And it is, you have to stand. I'm sorry, y'all. Have to stand. Um, and you stand in a circle and you go over what you did last sprint, uh, what you're going to be doing this sprint, and what uh, challenges you faced that you're going to need help with. And that's basically it. Uh, there, it gets more complicated, but for the purposes of today's meeting, um, that's really all that we're going to be going over. Um, and yeah, so. Voss kind of Voss already went over this, but it's just it's just way too important to not pound into your skulls a million times. Sign up for Trello, contact your team leads, working on a task, task ask questions. Uh, don't wait until the end of a sprint to say help. Um, there's just there's no reason to do that. We have email, uh, we have Facebook. Uh, if you really want to stalk someone, you can probably find their phone number. Uh, call them at 3 a.m. Um, and your team leads and the executive board and uh, Voss, uh, we're all here to help make uh, you successful um, because unfinished games don't look great on resumes. They're okay, but uh, finished polished games are what really gets you jobs and so that's what we're focusing on here. And it can't get done if, you, if people wait a week to say, I don't know how to log in to um, or GitHub or something like that. Um, and so if we don't stay in contact with, e with each other, we will not create a project worthy of a resume. And that's like a downer thing to say, but it's the truth. All right, I think this like one more slide. Cool. Uh, can I jump in one, oh, yeah. one second fast? Um, when you do have questions, uh, the first person you do want to talk to is your team lead. Um, go to your team lead, and if, your team lead, and if it's something they can't answer, they'll either come to me and ask me and I'll ask Nathan or they'll ask each other and we'll ask around but you try and go through your team lead let's work through the hierarchy and that way we can keep all the stuff streamlined so we're not getting random emails um, if you want to know your team leads email it's really simple if you work for art it's art.vgda at gmail if you're technical it's technical.vgda at gmail so on and so forth um, but please ask us questions if you have questions Ask us on here on Trello, and we're happy to help you. We're more than happy. Um, okay, so this is a lie. There's like one more thing that I didn't have time to make a slide for. Um, so some more fun news is that uh, we might be getting some speakers coming in soon. Uh, well, soon. Uh, we might be getting some speakers coming in, and unfortunately, can't give more details because we're still trying to discuss that. But um, I know it's something that was a lot of uh, fun and really helpful last semester um, and we haven't given up on that. Um, also another another thing, um, the Video Game Development Club at UC Irvine is putting on Video Game Developers Week uh, and so that, ha that started last night, it's happening tonight at 8 and it's going on for the next few days and they're having some really big names uh, come in and just talk. And they're very, so far, they're very nice, they're very approachable, uh, they'll answer your dumb questions, and uh, mine included. Um, 
and it's just a, it's a great way to meet people, our, our peers over at UC Irvine. It's a great way to learn from real pros in the industry. Like last night, I talked to the guy who is the um, he is the lead writer for Diablo. He was the lead writer for StarCraft II, and he made characters like he made characters like uh, Jack from uh, Mass Effect Two. So, like, this is not like a lightweight guy, and they're there. Um, so, really take advantage. And I'm trying to like set up some carpooling and stuff. So it's like, oh, I don't have a car, or I don't want to drive. That's a long drive. That's fine as long as you're willing to pitch in like some gas and parking money. Just message me, and we'll get this taken care of. Because um, also, it looks really good in our organization if a lot of VGD members start going to these events. Um, during the career fair over the uh, winter break, there were like a dozen VGD members there, and it got to the point where you were handing them your resume, and they're like, oh, you're from VGD too. That's really awesome. So that really helps us out a lot. Uh, OK, now this is real. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Comments? Yes. Whose art is that in the back? Uh, <laughs> Aaron, uh, this is just the, the this is the uh, the this is one of the remnants of our forefather, Aaron Lane. Uh, he made this our fearless leader. He made this uh, PowerPoint template, and we've just been stealing it for a year. Long hair, long hair, He's here. He might show up in a few minutes. Oh really? Yeah, he was yeah. in Adam's class. He was in. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> Didn't even say <laughs> anyway, anyone else? Uh, for the UCI uh, video game development stuff, is there like info online or? Uh, yeah, it's on our. Uh, I posted a. I shared. I shared the event on our Facebook group, um, so it's there, and yeah, I. I uh, it's, and it's really casual too. Uh, I mean, people are just going there. I saw one guy like working on a homework assignment. Like in the back row, which I thought was like really weird. I was like, this this guy's like, this guy's like right here. Like, <laughs> anyway, but it's really casual. You don't need to worry about anything. They're not even. I mean, I'm, if you threw your resume at them, I'm sure they would like take it. But I probably wouldn't have seen a little trashy. But it's it's just like show up, gain knowledge from these masters of their trade. Yeah. Uh, how long is this going on for? Just tonight or? No, it's it's going on throughout the rest of the week. Um. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. When does it end? Do you know? Friday night. Friday night. Um, and I'm gonna be. I, I can't make it tonight, but I was there last night. I'm gonna be there every other night because these are really cool events, and it's cool to go over all the cool stuff that you see. Irvine's uh, game development club has. Like they have, they have like a legitimate lab just on their own that they just go to and they program. And uh, Blizzard gave them a couple like a year ago. They gave them like ten grand to renovate. Their lab, and you know that that's like, oh man, totally jealous. And yeah, I'm super jealous, but it's also really cool because it shows that the industry actually invests in college organizations like ours. So who knows what can happen to uh, for us in the next year? Or so anyway, who else? Okay, cool. Um, well, now we can actually get on to the fun stuff, which is uh, showing what we've all been working on, uh, showing off what we've all been working on uh, this last week. And we have some concept art. We have some. Uh, programming magic happening, and we have some content going on. Um, who needs to leave <coughs> first? Everybody's been familiarizing themselves with what we're going to be using this semester, so GitHub, Unity, things like that. Had a few people who started production, the ones who are a little more comfortable with things already, so this is what we've gotten done so far. All right, so we added in some placeholder stuff just so we had something that kind of resembled the game. There's no pretty art yet. But so far, we've got isosceles triangles, which I know Josh will be very happy about. I want to scale in. Yes, I can't scale in. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's going to confuse everyone. All right, for the, the player and enemy, so we have some fighting triangles. It's awesome. And then a little bit of a background and some nice little yellow lines for arrows, which if we move on, we have, ta-da, that's, that's the game. Yeah. <laughs> Three showcase. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? All right. It's done ship it. It's done ship it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we do have some code, which I will show you in a second. But codes, um, we've got scripts for everything that most of them haven't been filled in yet. But at least now we have a place to write the code whenever we feel like it. 
There's code for the player movement, it, so you just kind of move in various directions. And then we also have code for the enemy, so they will choose a direction, face that way, and fire an arrow. The arrows don't do anything yet, but hey, it's progress. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, and then we have everybody signing up for Trello, GitHub, and Brennan actually typed up a tutorial for GitHub for anybody who's not terribly familiar with it, so that way there's no confusion. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So, Y'all ready for this? Yeah. No, it's not ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is where it starts, ladies and gentlemen. But the red triangle won't move. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not moving yet. Actually, it won't move ever, because they're all stationary for now. Yeah. <laughs> for them all. Yeah. Oh, with a black arrow. It's African American arrow. So plan for the next week, we're going to get the rest of the, oh, yeah. uh, we're get the, rest of the minimum viable product done, so we, by the end of next week, hopefully, we should have a player who can move but also face the direction that they're moving, can fire arrows, can kill enemies with the arrows, have the enemies kill the player with the arrows, um, have the ability to catch the arrows as they're flying, and then just general gameplay stuff like having the player spawn, respawn when dying so it can be tested. Pretty much by the end of next week, it should be a simple yet functional game. So that's the goal. All right. Um, oh yeah, we'll do another. Okay, so for our team, since I'm pretty sure all of you have seen that art style or that style document that I posted last time, you've kind of went and developed the style more since then. Well, the game perspective, like we see, is going to be literal top down, and they're just examples of how it's possibly going to look from the art side. And the assets. And then for tone, I found some, or Clues provided us with some other images to help explain the tone we're going for. So you can see it has a kind of dark feel to it, but it still has a beauty in it. Hi, Katrina. And then, so for art style, originally we said Japanese wood block, but now we're going for more sumi-like brush strokes with the watercolor texture for the coloring. And then for animation, we're going with the ink block splatter effect to it. And then just some examples of how the sumi brush lines could look. And then how the watercolor could be applied. Like we're looking at Okami for reference and this is some metal gear solid art. And then we looked at this video or this animation at the Dev Jam and had some great ink blot effects whenever the characters are interacting with each other or their environment. So you can see what we're imagining for the ink blot animation.
So eventually we're going to try and have everyone on the team using a template for all their concept art so they, it's something that could be presentable in their portfolios. Thank you. So you can see just how you've kind of been exploring with different styles and designs for Art Hero. You guys can go to the art board and check them out if you guys want to. And then so for this week, our team is going to try and push the concepts more, try and get more people to contribute, and come up with a finalized design for our basic enemy and our hero. Um, so this week, content team basically created a concept for our game. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so first of all, we have our main character, Hero, the girl you play at. So she is a young archer lady um, named June. Uh, she is the last member of her scouting party. Everyone else got killed by the Dean army that we're fighting. Um, and she's the last one, thus the last stands, just her. Um, she has an enchanted bow. Um, it's passed down from her mother, her grandmother, basically a long line going back three years, um, designed to kill the Dean army that we're fighting. Um, so she basically wanders across this huge, horrible army of demons, and being that she is the only one there, <coughs> takes it on herself to warn everyone else of this incursion. Um, so these are all the shameless city pulled off Katrina's So I don't take credit for finding these. These are kind of things we're looking for, just like young, prodigious, um, kind of going with the Mongolian theme for her. Uh, yeah, just hero girl. Um, so as for the enemies, uh, like I said, there's a big army of demons invading. We're going kind of like a like Oni, no face, like just <coughs> foot soldiers for them. Um, what we're mostly going to be seeing of them is the forward guard, or the advance guard. Um, they're all long bowmen to kind of justify them all staying in place and using arrows. Um, so they're like they're they wear armor, but they're not like really human. They're not flesh and blood. They're just like creatures of smoke and shadow and ink and stuff. And we're thinking it's going to be really cool. Like, hit them, they'll explode with the ink, stuff like that, and they're just like this big menace. Um, we're thinking the story is that they've been ravaging, like historically they would ravage this land that we're playing in like all the time, so people over time have built up like defenses against them, but they haven't shown up in like 200 years, so people have kind of forgot about them, they've kind of fallen back to legend, um, so now they're showing up, and our hero June is the only person who knows about them, so she has to kind of reawaken the legend. Um, as far as gameplay goes, right now we're just, oh. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Not quite. No, I didn't go back. One more. One more. Okay, no. <laughs> sorry. Push direction. Yeah. Still Yep. Um, so as far as gameplay goes, right now we're just working with one, one enemy and just shooting forward that kind of thing, but we'll eventually have three to four, so like stuff like different firing patterns, different type of arrows, we've toyed with the ideas of like flaming arrows that she can't catch, or arrows like Belliste with huge fucking arrows that she can't catch. Um, stuff like that is what we'll be playing with to keep it fresh over the levels. 
to get and stolen from Katrina's Pinterest, this kind of thing. So like, kind of wearing samurai armor, but like inside they're just like these like ghostly shadow creatures. Um, so as far as the story, I've already touched on it. So she is scouting out and she comes across this burning village that has, is the entry point for these demons. They ra completely ravaged it, it's burning across. Um, she fights them in the village. Uh, she realizes that she has to warn everyone that these are creatures of legend that are kind of coming back to, um, to destroy their country. Uh, so she has to climb the, tent, climb the mountain that's beside her. There's a mountain. Um, go through all these, I guess, different levels. Uh, reach the temple on the mountain. The temple there has a brazier that is um, was designed as part of like a Gondor calls for aid warning system of beacon lights to kind of um, to warn the countryside of the demon's arrival back when they were a threat. Um, so that she decides like that's what she has to do. So um, demons kind of follow her up the mountain across five levels um, until she gets to the temple. So she lights a fire. They haven't decided if she wants to shoot an arrow into it or just light it. Um, then demons are surrounding her in the temple. She kills as many as she can um, before dying. It is the last stand. She does have to die. Um, but as she's dying, she sees that the next signal fire has been lit. People have been warned. Her death wasn't for nothing. And it's, it's a sad but also happy ending. And that's the basic yeah, point. Yeah. So yeah, this is the kind of world okay, we start a kind of an environment like this. So there's the village and there's the mountain living in the distance. So that's kind of the, the distance she crosses concept art I found um, for um, just a temple like in the mountains like that um, and then we're going for something like this where it's all the beacons and that's kind of how the warning system works. Um, so as far as like the actual gameplay, uh, we're thinking five levels, start in the village, then go kind of into the grasslands and as you go up the mountain it's kind of like the foothills and then like a mountain pass and then you're trying to get the temple. Um, each the first four levels are going to be, there's a set amount of enemies, you have to kill all of those enemies before dying yourself, and then you can move on. The last level, enemies are going to respawn indefinitely, um, so your goal will just be to kill as many as you can before dying, and then after you beat the story mode of the game, that will be the level that you will replay um, for high scores and stuff like that, uh, so you can just play that and see how many you can kill. Um, we're thinking of different enemy types. We've got the, the go-ahead from technical, so we'll have covers, so we'll mess with map types and stuff like that. Um, and that's what we're, we're looking at right now. So basically that's all we figured out the weekend, or this whole week. Um, this next week we are going to be, well probably tonight we're going to have set up documents that state exactly what I just did in PowerPoint just to have a reference. Um, this week we are going to flush out each of the levels, maybe have tentative maps up for that, and brainstorm a few different enemies. Cool. Questions? Um, everyone, everyone in development teams were, were given, you know, some kind of tasks, um, and um, we're given tasks, and um, so you're just gonna go stand up in a circle somewhere in this room, if that's not possible, um, and go over. What you, did, what you worked on last um, week, and then they're going to be going over what you are going to work on, working on, and what are the obstacles that you faced uh, last week, and what which ones you might face this one. And your team leads will help you uh, get over those. Um, cool. Uh, 